Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with MEM. A couple of days ago, somebody in the MEM Slack group was asking about some best practices for knowledge management and note taking in MEM. So I decided that what I would do was a three part series on some best practices for capturing, organizing, and using your notes in MEM. And in this first video, what we're going to do is go over some basic best practices for capturing knowledge in MEM. And if you haven't checked it out, be sure to check out our free guide to building a second brain in MEM. I'll include a link in the description below. Now, let's get to the tutorial. So I decided to do this video because uh, there were people who were in the MEM Slack group asking for some best practices for MEM. And rather than do an entire video on how to capture, organize, and use your notes, I decided to break it up into three parts. And for this first video, what we're going to focus on is some best practices for capturing notes in MEM. So for a lot of people, capture is the really easy part of knowledge management because it's super easy to save links to anything. You can capture things using a MEM Spotlight, which I've talked about in previous videos, and you can send things to text messages just by configuring them here in flows or even for emails. But I think the biggest mistake that people make when they capture is that they don't capture with the intention to create. So what do I mean by that? Whenever you capture something, you want to give some thought to how you might be able to use it in the future. That might mean tagging it with a tag related to something else. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to bidirectional links, but or, or linking it to a particular project. So for example, if you're working on something and you come across an article related to it, you can actually link it to that project. So for example, right now, I'm working on a book called The Artificial intelligent creative. So anytime I read articles about AI or creativity, I just add a link to the project for that book. So that's what I mean by capturing with the intention to create. So really, that's the easy part. But I think where people start to get tripped up is when that information finally gets into them. So I want to talk about a few best practices. The first is to give every single note that you capture a title. Now, why is that so important? One of the things I saw when I was teaching the cohort version of Maximize Your Output with MEM is that people would put a bunch of information in a note and it might be a quote from somebody or whatever it is. On its own, that's pretty useless because of the fact that when you are wanting to connect it to something that's already inside of the database, then it's really hard to use because I think that people don't understand that bidirectional links are not just about adding related links to the things that you have below. So for example, we'll, we'll talk about smart notes here in a second, but it's not just about putting a list of links and saying these are the notes that are related to it because the truth is you want to be able to connect what you learn to what you know. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of how this works. So you'll see here that I've already been able to put this into a sentence. And now what I'm going to do is link it to something else. And then you can So you notice how we took what were former notes here and we turned them into a sentence using several notes. And that's why it's so vitally important to give all of your notes a title because they become much more valuable in your ability to combine them together to create something new. And it also makes it much easier to find things. The, the search in MEM is fantastic, but when you actually give every note a title, you're going to have much more of an idea what that's about. In fact, I would argue that titles are more important than tags or any of the other ways that you think about organizing your notes because titles are what effectively enable you to make connections between your ideas. So that is the first key to best practices in MEM is to give every single note that you capture a title. So the second part of this is to take smart notes. Now, I've talked about smart notes before in another video. You can actually watch my tutorial and book review on the book, How to Take Smart Notes. But let me show you what I mean by smart notes. So typically, what a lot of people do when they read a book is they collect a bunch of quotes or highlight a bunch of things, save it to Readwise or Evernote or whatever it is, and then they call it a day. And the problem with that is that it's not particularly useful if you want to use the knowledge that you're gaining from other people's insight to generate your own. So this is an example of a smart note that I took from a book called Stolen Focus. And here, what you'll see is these are my verbatim quotes. These are what they call the reference notes. And before I ever put this quote in, I actually ended up writing this. And 
as a result, I not only have something that I ended up writing in my own words, but I also ended up capturing an idea for something that really was half-baked and is still half-baked, even though it was inside of a note. And that's the thing that bidirectional links allow you to do. And we'll talk about that here when we get to the example on bidirectional links. But the key here is to take smart notes because the great thing about taking smart notes is the fact that they're rewritten in your own words. So that way, if you want to combine them to create something new, say write a blog post, write a book, they become a lot more useful than if you had just a bunch of quotes. So for example, if all I had on this book were all these different quotes, then I might be able to embed these quotes in a blog post or something like that. But if you actually look at my mem for Stolen Focus, what you'll see here is that it's mentioned in a number of different notes, all of which are based on the quotes in this book, simply because of the fact that I rewrote them in my own words. Now you'll see here that I didn't embed the quotes in some of those places just because I haven't <clears throat> gotten to it. But you'll see this same format in pretty much every single one of my notes. And other than the source, I actually, when I want to connect something, I try to connect it to something that already exists. And that takes us nicely into the next best practice for capturing notes. And so what you'll see here is three different links, all of which you have seen before, but I want to walk you through the process of what happened here to lead to all of these. So the first thing that I did was I created this literature note based on the concepts in this book. And while I was writing this note, a thought occurred to me that I thought might make for an interesting note or a blog post, and I just called it the long-term consequences of a self-obsessed society that was related to this note. And the writing this note down was what sparked the idea for this note. And that's the thing that you want to think about when it comes to bidirectional links is the fact that they give you the freedom to capture your ideas when you're ready. <clears throat> they give you the... And that's the thing that you want to think about when it comes to bidirectional links is that they give you the freedom to capture your ideas as they occur and develop them when they're ready. So it doesn't matter if you have nothing in this note. So for example, even though I have a lot of content here, actually I don't have much, you can see it's half-baked. I have plenty of mems where I've written something in a bidirectional link and there's nothing in the content because I just wasn't sure what it was going to be about. But the other thing that's really powerful about using bidirectional links this way is that it allows you to retrace the thought process that sparked an idea in the first place. So for example, if this suddenly showed up here and I started looking at this and I was thinking about you know, why did I come up with this idea, where did it come from, I could actually go and look and see all the different notes that I actually referred to it in. So suddenly I can see that, okay, something sparked this idea and it was me reading this book stolen folks but you can see here that this is completely half baked it, you know it might be a blog post it might be a chapter of a book it doesn't matter there's just something here but even if there was nothing here it still wouldn't matter because I could come back to it when I was ready to do something with it so just to recap there are four main best practices that you want to adopt when it comes to capturing notes in mem the first is to capture with the intention to create now there are going to be times when you have no idea how you might use something in the future. And in that case, I, I recommend you give it something fairly generalized and, and make it easy for yourself to find. The other is to give every note a title. Now, giving every note a title does two things. First, it makes your notes much easier to find and use in the future. And we'll talk about that when we get to the third video in this series on, or the, and we'll talk about that when we get to the second video in this series on how to organize your notes. Not only that, giving every note a title makes it easier to use your notes when you're doing things like creating content. The second best practice is to take smart notes, particularly when it comes to knowledge that you're consuming, whether it's books, podcasts, lectures, whatever it is, because when you rewrite things in your own words, not only are those notes going to be much more usable, you're also going to reinforce those concepts. And then the third best practice is to use bidirectional links to capture your ideas as they occur and develop ideas when they're ready. And bidirectional links are incredibly powerful for that very reason because they allow you to retrace the thought process that sparked an idea to begin with. So those are the four best practices for capturing notes in MEM. And in the next series, I'm going to go over the best. And in the next video, I'll go over some best practices for organizing your notes in MEM.